you probably wouldn't know this if I didn't tell you. So I am Asian. <laughs> there are over a million new immigrants entering the United States every year. Add to this nearly 80 million multicultural Americans who are already here and you have a powerful group who can positively impact your business if you know how to reach them. Michael Lee is a multicultural expert who can help you understand how ethnic people think, behave, negotiate and buy, and how to tap into this huge market. He also shows managers how to hire and retain workers from diverse cultures. Michael is the first Asian American to earn the Certified Speaking Professional designation in the history of the National Speakers Association. He is also the author of several books on marketing to people from diverse cultures. So I'm as American as anybody. In fact, I speak no Chinese. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. No, I speak no Chinese. Thanks to the California public school system, <laughs> I speak Spanish. <laughs> but when I was growing up, I didn't have a clue. The only thing I wanted to be when I was little was I wanted to be a cowboy. And yeah, you wanted to be one too. Man, when I was growing up, I had it all. I had the boots the spurs, the chaps. I had the pearl-handled six guns. I had the vest, the bandana, and the 10-gallon hat. Man, I was looking good. I mean, I loved that, uh, that cowboy outfit so much that I wore it to my first day of school. And I remember sauntering up to the playground and looking out over that sea of faces. And there were kids running and jumping and just having a good time. And as I looked around for a friendly face, all of a sudden there was a hush. And it felt like everybody was looking at me. And then I heard a sound that would change my life. It was a sound only a slippery, slimy snake could make. It was Ed, the school bully, and two of his friends. And he looked at them, and he looked at me. And he said, hey, look at the Ching Chong Chinaman. He can't be a cowboy. He could only be an Indian, and Indians always lose. Oh, man, that hurt. I didn't even know what it meant. But I went running home after school, and I said to my parents, what does Ching Chong Chinaman mean? And they said, you know, some people believe that because we are different, we don't really belong here. What I learned that day is some people believe that differences are wrong. And many of you were made to feel different when you were growing up. Some of you might have been too short or too tall, too skinny, or maybe had a few extra pounds, wore glasses, had freckles. Kids made fun of you, too, and it didn't feel very good, did it? But I know now that differences good. Differences are a tremendous advantage if you're willing to embrace them. As salespeople, if you're good and you're different, people are going to remember you and you're going to be very, very successful. In your companies, almost 50% of all the people coming into our companies today are minorities. And they've got tremendous things to offer because they think differently. They have different solutions to difficult problems. They've got different ideas. Isn't that wonderful? But differences can also present challenges. And one of those challenges 
is language. Now, I had no idea when I was growing up any difference in language. <laughs> I spoke English. But as I grew up, I began to understand that, for example, the Asian languages are not the same. I began to understand that the Chinese couldn't talk to the Japanese, who can't talk to the Filipinos, who can't talk to the Vietnamese, and none of them can talk to the Koreans. <laughs> and I've had some challenges around languages you probably have never had. When I was in high school and I started dating, if things went well with a young lady, I would get invited to her parents' house to meet them. <laughs> now, what would you guess is the very first question a Chinese father asks a young man who's dating his daughter? What would you think? Speak Do you speak Chinese? No, come on, I look like this. What does he assume? That I speak Chinese? course. What are you going to be when you grow up? Ah, nah, nah, nah. The very first question a Chinese father asks a young man who's dating his daughter is, what dialect do you speak? <laughs> I had no idea. Chinese is not Chinese. There are hundreds and hundreds of different dialects in China, and one village can't talk to another village because they speak different dialects of Chinese. And the only way they can communicate is in writing, because the writing is universal. Well, folks, you know what dialect I speak. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> and if I told him that, would I have children today? No. <laughs> ah, and I don't know where it came from, but something in the back of my mind said, Michael, pick the most obscure dialect you can think of. <laughs> and out of the blue, it hit me, and I just blurted it out. I said, I speak Fukanese. <laughs> Michael Lee provides customized solutions to your exact needs by interviewing the top people in your organization. He will integrate their comments, questions, and suggestions into his program. His topics include selling to multicultural customers, hiring and retaining diverse employees, negotiate anything, earn a black belt in bargaining, overcoming objections, building an all-referral business. Our companies are either embracing people who are different or we're pushing them away in very subtle ways. Let me give you an example. In America, how do we normally greet people? Hi, Elise. Privilege. Neil. Purusha. Uh -huh. Nice to see you. But folks, the handshake is not the most common greeting in the world. What is it? It's actually a bow. And if Elise or Purusha had been traditional Japanese or Middle Eastern women, what did I just do? I insulted them very subtly, but it basically said, you know, I don't care much about your background. You're going to have to do as Americans do. And I know you want to be nice. And some of you, what you think is, well, I know that bowing is probably the most common greeting in the world, so I'm going to take the initiative. When I see the next Middle Eastern or Asian person, I'm going to give them a bow. So here they come up to your store and you see them speaking some language you know is Asian. And you're thinking, I'll give them a nice bow, not a handshake. Think about what they're thinking. Here this couple comes up the walkway. And he turns to her and he says, you know Marge? Could be Marge, right? <laughs> he says, you know Marge? I think I'm going to give them a nice, firm, American-style handshake because I've been practicing. That'll make them feel good. And so what happens? You're here, and they walk into your store or into your office, and you say, hi, welcome to our office. But of course, what does he do? He puts his hand out. Now, as you went down to bow, what did you see? 
a hand come out. So what did you do? You straightened up really quick and put your hand out. Now, of course, he put his hand out. What did he see? The top of your head. So what did he do? He pulled his hand back, and he went down to bow. And what happens is you do this for about three minutes, OK? <laughs> Don't do that. That's so embarrassing, and it can ruin your entire relationship. Stop assuming that people want to be greeted in any one way, shape, or form. Instead, let them determine how our relationship is going to begin and how it's going to continue. So in other words, when they come into your store, into your office, all you say is, hi, welcome. And you hesitate for just a moment and see what they do. Often what they'll do is they will give you a handshake. He will. Then I want you to do something most Americans don't do. What we normally do is this, to the woman. That forces her to shake your hand, which may be totally against her belief. So do this. If he puts his hand out, shake it, certainly. Then drop it. And then look at her. And if she doesn't put her hand out, you just nod to her and acknowledge her presence, give her respect, and then move on with your relationship. But that little tiny thing is going to be so sensitive because that says what to them? We care about you. Now, there are other people that stand much closer, people in the Middle East, for example. They will hug you and maybe even kiss you on both cheeks, and then they just stand there six inches apart. And I know what Americans do, because that's way too close for us. We stand there like this and try and talk. <laughs> Don't do that. Let them determine the distance and just get comfortable with it. But let me tell you another secret. What people in the Middle East do if they're comfortable with you is they'll hug you and kiss you on both cheeks. Now, guys, this is not real comfortable for us men to have another man hug you. Get used to it. And let me tell you a secret. If they go to kiss you on the cheek, don't turn away. Because what happens if you turn away? You get the next one right on the lips. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Just get used to it. Let other people lead. And let's stop being so American and, and stop assuming that everybody wants to do what we do. And one other thing. Folks, it's OK to ask people about their culture. Because folks, we know we look different. And if you don't ask me about my culture, there is a noise that goes on in your head constantly. Like you're thinking, boy, that guy sure speaks pretty good English. 